What is up, creator? It's awfully good to see you. This video is a tutorial on OBS shader filters. This one is wicked cool because you will have a huge pile of effects that you can apply to your videos, your photos, and to other sources to make your live streams wicked cool. If you're new to my channel, I provide information on software that helps your YouTube channel really explode by making your videos really fun and cool. So if you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for new video notification every single week. Boom, get, get some. some. Okay, let's download the installation file. We'll go into Google and type in OBS shader filter. One, that's one word, shader filter. Hit your enter key. And the first link that pops up on Google is the right link. It's OBS shader filter. I'll put a link to this in my description in case you can't find it. And here we are at the actual page. It's the blue site that keeps you guessing. <laughs> Click the go to download button in the upper right hand corner. You can't miss it. It's white and the zip file will download to your downloads folder. Okay. Now expand the contents of the zip file into your downloads folder. Right. In my case, I can right click. I have seven zip and I can extract here and it will create a folder called OBS dash studio. Now I want you to open up a another file explorer by clicking file, open new window and drag it so that each window is next to each other. So let me address, adjust these properly here. And on the left hand side, what I'd like you to do is actually find the working folder of your program of OBS studio. In most cases, it'll be on your C drive. And in my case, it's in program files. If I scroll down, it's OBS dash studio. As you can see, both folders are named OBS dash studio. So the contents of the zip file provides a roadmap to show you where to move the files into the working directory for OBS studio. That's why they're both named the same thing. So if I open up the data folder for both sides, as you can see, there's another folder called OBS dash plugins. That means on the working directory for OBS, you have to open that up for both. So as you can see, when we clicked into data, there's another folder called OBS dash plugins. That's the installation's way of saying, open it up again on both sides. And now we have a bunch of directories that we need to move over to the live directory for OBS studio. So highlight them from the zip file and drag them over and copy them. Now let's go back to the main folder directory, which is OBS studio and go into the next folder, which is OBS dash plugins. We'll open it up on both sides. Okay. There's a 32 bit and a 64 bit folder. Let's open up the 32 bit and move those over. Okay. And then we'll back up to OBS plugins and go to the 64 bit and move those over. Now I realize that you, you may or may not have a 64 bit or 32 bit. I'm asking you to do this for both because I don't know which version you have. So I'm just trying to make it easy for everybody. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's see if the OBS shader filter plugin has successfully installed. If OBS is running on your computer, turn it off. Let's open it up now for the first time and see if it's there. Okay, I've got my C922 camera set up to receive video. I'm going to right click on it and hit filters and hit the plus sign under effect filters. And lo and behold, there it is. It's called user dash defined shader. If you see that you are ready to go. Okay. Let's have some fun and play with some of these filters. All right. So I have a C922 set up as a source and I'm going to right click that and select filters. And in the lower left hand corner under effects filters, I'm going to click the plus sign and select user defined shader. And it defaults to naming it whatever it wants. That's fine. Hit okay. And I just want to go over these parameters real quick. The first four fields here pertain to making adjustments to the video size and height and width. You really don't need to play with those. What I'd like you to do is select the load shader from text from file. And it gives you a browse parameter here. And if you click it, it'll take you to the default location where all the shaders are located. And you'll notice that there are two file extensions, one dot shader and the other one dot effect. Now I'm going to scroll down to the cartoon dot effect and hit open. And when you use a dot effect extension, you have to check off the use effect file dot effect checkbox. Okay. And you have to then click the reload effect. And as you can see, it works. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see some extra parameters here and 
One of those things is something called notes. And in the notes, it gives you a set of suggested uh, parameter settings. Five by two seems reasonable. In other words, what, he's, what that person's trying to say is the hue step of five and the value step of two will give you a neat effect, essentially. And so you can make adjustments to these numbers by hitting the up arrow and or the down arrow to show you the different variations. Wow, looks like I have a horrible sunburn when I turn that up. Oh my God. And uh, you know, you can do the same thing with Hue. Now you can also check off the use slider inputs, but I wouldn't recommend it because the parameter increments are so dramatic that you don't see the effects occurring. So in most cases, I wouldn't recommend that you use the slider to change the inputs, okay? I would recommend that you just use your up and down arrows for the hue step. This is the doodle effect that provides this weird shaking effect. The doodle scale percent is five and the snap percent is 1.99. This effect that you see is from the embers dot effect shader filter and the effect is being placed on top of the C922 source. If you go into the C922, right click it and go into filters, open up the shader filter parameters and scroll down, you'll see that the animation speed is 2.00, movement direction is 5.00, movement direction vertical is 1036, movement speed percentage is 12, layer count 113, luma is negative 0.03, luma min of smooth is 0.01, and alpha percentage is 100%. Play with your heart's content, but this is placing the entire image over my existing C922 video feed. Pretty cool. Okay, the next effect is the animated textures dot effect. And if you go in and look at the filters here, basically what it is is essentially two rotating images that are in sort of a semi-transparent form. And uh, if you scroll down here, I'll give you the parameters 100, 0 0.96, 50, 4.97, 10, 4.71, and 1. You can make really make some hardcore adjustments to this thing and make it do some really wacky stuff. For example, if I go to the polar angle and make it 50, it does some different weird stretching effects. Really cool effect and really neat. This shader is called matrix.effect. It's pretty cool. It kind of looks like the matrix effect. Um, if you go into the parameters here, and I want to just make sure that you understand to not, not select use slider inputs they will crash the the shader and it's just going to cause trouble i repeat do not select use slider inputs all right i just wanted to give you a heads up i was trying to make another effect work for one reason or another and i thought i could hit the reload effect button you can just make it out at the bottom of this screen and it crashes the program it's not the end of the world you can just restart obs but it does cause a problem so you may want to avoid clicking the reload effect button not reset but reload you know what i thought about it you know what would really help you is if i created a nice video that provides all the special effects that the obs shader filter plugin creates i'll put in the parameters that show you how to make the effect i'll include that video right here so click it i'll catch you over there stay strong keep fighting i'm rooting for you remember the struggle to succeed at YouTube is the reward. I'll catch you on the flip side. Yes!